So I'm talking to Jez Bates, who's just sailed around Britain solo, which I think is hugely admirable. I just uh, think that's amazing. <clears throat> and as you can see, he is sitting aboard Muera. Starting with some quick fire questions mm -hmm. then. Uh, I just want um, a sentence in answer to each of these, Jez. So here goes. How many miles have you covered? Uh, 1,981 on the ground. I presume that's nautical miles, nautical isn't it? Nautical miles, yes. <laughs> Number of nights on board? 91. Tell me what's the best meal you remember? I think the best meal was in the pub in Plockton where I was looked after by an orthopaedic colleague. Very nice. I feel a string of questions coming on about what you were eating on the other nights, but we'll come to that. Um, okay, next random quickfire question. Most bizarre moment? Yeah, I think probably that's when I decided uh, I'd left Peel Harbour on the Isle of Man and was took the ground on the on the beach so I could look at the bottom, and during the evening, three young girls who were obviously on a night out rushed up to the boat and said, "Can we take a selfie of your boat?" And there the, and there they did with me <laughs> in the background. Excellent. It's, uh, my imagination had all sorts of other endings to that story, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what was the the let's say the longest passage that you had to endure on your round Britain trip? Longest was going from Spurn Head in the Humber up to the Tyne, to, up to Tynemouth, and that was 114 okay. nautical miles. How long did that take? About 27 hours. Wow. Um, roughest sea. Roughest sea, well, there were two that were rough, but I think the roughest or the most surprisingly rough was Fife Ness, which is the headland as you leave the Firth of Falls going north as you turn the corner. Uh, I hit very unexpected overfalls that even apparently the fishermen were surprised at, and it was incredibly violent pitching up and down. Okay, this links to the next question then, which is what was the scariest moment? Was that it or was there something else? Uh, I think going round Land's End was also quite violent. I decided to take the inside route rather at the last minute. I noticed, yeah. I could see where the overfalls were and I thought I would go inside of them, but I was just clinging on in the cockpit onto the handles either side of the companionway, just trusting the boat to get me through. And then I just popped out and all went calm again. <laughs> Well done, Moira. Indeed, yes. <laughs> the boat usually survives more than the skipper. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk more about the boat in a minute, but um, uh, strangest vessel you saw? I don't think I saw any particularly strange vessels, really. Um, Nicest? Apart from Moira, um, when I was coming down uh, the Kyle Lockalsh, I was followed by a gaff rig, old fishing vessel that was Danish, I think, originally, sort of wooden gaff rig vessel, which followed me down with its all its sails flying, I think, including the top sail, and that was quite spectacular. Okay, best wildlife? Best wildlife, well, I saw a lot of dolphins, and they were just, every time they came, they were just such an encouragement, such an excitement, but the best time was when I lay on the foredeck with my hand dangling in the water and almost stroked them as they jumped out of the water. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think the dolphins were the favourite. Oh, fantastic. Mm. A lovely moment. <clears throat> and uh, the question I have to ask, was there a favourite place? Yeah, there were a few, but I would pick out probably, uh, again, in the Western Isles, I was just moving from one small anchorage to another using the Antares charts. And I had a night just on a little narrow passage between two islands called Gihe and Helise. And... Uh, you just followed a very narrow channel in and then I just anchored on a beautiful sandy bottom and uh, had it all to myself. And it's beautiful shelter, beautiful scenery and just an exciting place to get into as well. So I think that's probably my favourite. Close second best would be Solver, uh, just near St David's in South Wales, which was an unexpected okay. sandy yeah. river harbour. You talked about your love of challenges. Is there another one on the horizon or is that too early to say? There is a thing called the Jester Challenge and one of the years when that happens, it's a trip from Plymouth to Baltimore in, on the south coast of Ireland, which is about this year. I think it took them about six or seven days because there were very light winds. Mm. Um, but that's something I would like to do. 
tempting mm. tempting okay final question then is uh, advice for other people so if there's if there's somebody else who's dreaming of a similar voyage um what advice would you give them i think boat preparation is really critical because otherwise you could spend your whole time repairing breakages and you know changing getting a new battery and all sorts of things yeah great thank you well um Welcome back. We've said that before. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to see you in the cabin. Mm. I love the logo and everything. I didn't ask you before what um, Muera means. So Muera is uh, the name of the south or southeasterly uh, prevailing wind on Lake Malawi, where I did quite a lot of sailing for a few years. So the, it's called the Muera, the wind that blows in the in the middle of the year for at sort of four six, sometimes four seven. So um, yeah, that was why I chose it. And that's why you've got the the wind logo here as well. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, fair winds to you, Jez. Thanks. Very nice chatting.